Hi again then guys, and so we've got another Gran Turismo 6 top speed set up for you today. And this time it's for the Volvo S60. So you want your racing soft tyres of course. For suspension, you want the ride height on 100, front and rear. Springs we've got on 6 and 575. Dampers to 4, anti-roll to 5. Camber on 2. Neutral toe as usual. For the gearbox, I've put the highest possible auto setting on this one, then we've rounded off the gears to 4350, 2750, 1930, 1430, 1110 and 900 with a final drive of 2. For the diff we've got torque, acceleration and deceleration all on 30. As far as power, you want all of your power upgrades of course and I would definitely recommend having NOS for a reason which I'll explain in a moment and obviously you want the full weight loss package. Traction control is of course turned off as usual and so the reason why I'd recommend using NOS with this particular model is for this reason. If you try and pull away off the line that is literally full throttle and that's the biggest downside to this car and I actually mentioned that downside in a review video that I did for this car a few days ago. Now if you pull away off the line with it redlined, then it will pull away just fine. But obviously pulling away off the line out of the pit lane causes major issues because it just doesn't pull away. Because there's just so much lag, it takes about five minutes to get out of the pit lane, which is pretty annoying. Obviously when you're in an actual race, that's not an issue because the car will just pull away because you can redline it. But obviously you have no control over the throttle in pit lane. So it is quite an annoying thing that happens. Another thing that seems to happen to some cars on Gran Turismo, I don't know if any of you guys have experienced this, but you may be able to see just on the back of the car that part of the bumper section is kind of green and glitchy looking. And I'm not sure why the cars do that. It's been quite a while actually on this game since my cars started doing that. The, uh, the other car that used to do that was the Audi Streamliner. It used to get kind of patches over its paintwork for no apparent reason. So that's kind of a weird thing. I don't know if that's something to do with being a non-premium car or something. But back to the performance. This car has a cruising speed of about 215, which is pretty good for its power. It's good for a front-wheel drive car as well. And it does make it a pretty good sleeper. And as far as draft potential, obviously you've got the sixth gear, and that gives you, as you can see, massive amounts of draft potential which if you engage your NOS as you can see you can get well we're already doing 230 and we've still got well over a thousand rpm left so you can easily slipstream this car up around I should think the 280 region if not more to be honest which again for its power is very impressive obviously you'll have to use a bit of NOS off the line generally uh, just to keep up with your opponents to get that slipstream but overall, it's it's actually a pretty good sleeper car. It handles pretty well. It doesn't weave over the road too much, which some front-wheel drive cars do. But overall, it's, it's a pretty decent sleeper car. And not many people use the car. And people who have considered buying it sometimes tend to underestimate how good it is. But it is actually a very good car. So, if you haven't tried this car before, I'd definitely recommend you give it a go at least once. And if you found this tune setup helpful, feel free to subscribe. I put out new top speed tunes like this every day, new drag tunes as well every weekend. And as always, thanks for watching.